New update, am I the butthole for yelling at my sister-in-law at my wedding and telling her no one cares that she is pregnant? Posted by Deleted. Sorry everyone, my story was duplicated in my previous post, hopefully it was fixed. Tilder, I yelled at my sister-in-law at my wedding that no one cares that she is pregnant after she repeatedly tried to take the attention off of my husband and I. My husband, 30-year-old male, and I, 26-year-old female, got married during the plague. We couldn't have a big ceremony because of restrictions, and unfortunately my family couldn't be present as they live in a different country. With restrictions finally lifted, we decided to have a more traditional ceremony in my home country with my family. My husband's family came, his parents, some friends, cousins and his sister, 32-year-old female, will call her Sarah, and her husband, 28-year-old male, will call him Matt. Sarah and Matt live on the other side of the US than the rest of the family. They had their wedding a couple of months back in their home state, and ever since then when we have a conversation, even without our wedding coming up, Sarah would say that she and Matt are planning to get pregnant on the trip for my husband and I's wedding. No big deal, I just made sure to tell her that she needs to ovulate for that to happen, but other than that I could not care less. What started to get annoying is when we were talking about all the activities, excursions people wanted to do so could go ahead and book it. Sarah would always say make sure, there's is enough time for Matt and I at the hotel, so we can get busy making our baby. Again, kind of gross, a little annoying, but whatever, they are grown ups. About a week before we all leave to go to my home country, Sarah and Matt arrive in our home state to spend time with family as they rarely see them. My husband and I, his parents, and my husband's brother and sister-in-law are sitting chatting when Sarah blurts out she is pregnant. We all get really excited, congratulate them and saying how happy we are. We start asking some questions and Sarah says she is two weeks pregnant. Everyone kind of loses a little bit of excitement and say wow, that's really early. We suggest to wait before telling other people, just as a lot can happen. People usually don't even know they are pregnant until at least six weeks, and even then they are encouraged to wait until after the first trimester to tell people. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law were very happy and excited for them, but cautioned them even more as they have experienced multiple miscarriages before having their first child. Matt replied by saying they are only telling the people closest to them, egg his parents, her parents and her siblings, no one else since it is so early. Well, the next day, Sarah had called her great uncle and his wife over for drinks and decided to tell them too, called her one aunt and uncle and told them, and by the end of the day basically the entire extended family knew, as well as some of her mom's friends which stopped by the house and Sarah told. With each person Sarah told Matt got more agitated as they had agreed to only tell a select few people. Matt finally gave up and asked her why she doesn't just post it on Facebook as it will be quicker, to which she replied, she wants to, but she think it will be frowned upon. My husband came to me and said it feels like she is trying to draw the attention away from us and our wedding, as she is known to do anything and everything to have the spotlight on her. I said to not worry about it, as when we are in my home country, she isn't going to know many people so she won't say anything. He agreed but went to his parents and told them what he was feeling, and asked if they could politely suggest that she keep it to herself when we left for the trip. They agreed that it was valid for him to feel that way, as they know she hates it if the focus is not on her. Anyway, we leave for the wedding and I see my mom for the second time in five years. Obviously it was a very emotional reunion, but we wiped off our tears quickly and sat down for a meal with my husband's family. After I introduce her to everyone, the waiter take our order and the first thing Sarah says to my mom is, your daughter probably already told you, but I won't be drinking this trip. My mom says that it's no problem, you don't have to drink to have fun, and that Sarah will still have fun even if she chooses not to drink. Sarah interrupts my mom to tell her it's not by choice that she is not drinking, but that she is pregnant. Keep in mind this is 10 minutes after she met my mom. My mom says congratulations and keeps on with another conversation. Sarah interrupts my mom again and tells her how she is two weeks pregnant and just so excited. My mom, who is in medicine, then tells Sarah the same thing we did, that she should probably wait until she is in her second trimester to tell people, and Sarah completely ignores her. The same thing happens with my aunt, cousins, uncles, sister and grandparents, all of whom she had never met before. My husband yet again speaks to his parents and asks them to please tell her to keep it private, because it feels as though she is purposefully trying to take the attention away from our wedding. They say they will talk to her. Matt actually comes up to us and apologizes, by saying he agrees that it has gotten out of hand, and that the number of people that know is way more than the number they agreed upon. Fast forward we are sitting eating while we wait for one of our excursions. A family that I lived with for three when I first moved to my husband's country flew out for the wedding and met up with us for lunch. They have never met my sister-in-law. 
The wife and I are talking about the wedding and all the arrangements, while my sister-in-law sits across from us and listens to the conversation. My husband orders some shots for everyone at the table, when his mom says she doesn't want one, so he tells the server minus. One. My sister-in-law hears him ordering the shots and goes off yelling across the table. I can't drink alcohol, you know I cannot drink a shot. Why would you order me one? Everyone kind of stops and looks at her for a sec, before my husband says it's not a problem as Matt said he wants. 2. Everyone then continues their conversation including the wife and I. My sister-in-law interrupts me and continues to make a big fuss over how my husband ordered her alcohol when he knows she's not drinking. The wife then says it's okay because Matt said he'll drink it so it's not going to waste. My sister-in-law then says again how annoying it is that my husband ordered her a shot, and I say to not worry about because I'll just drink it if Matt doesn't want it. She keeps doing this till I finally tell the wife she's not drinking because she's pregnant. The wife says congratulations and asks how far she is, and then also tells her to be careful of telling too many people. This situation happens about three more times in the week leading up to the wedding. Now this is why I might be the butthole. The last time it happened she was telling my high school friends at the wedding how sick she has been, but no one asked why she was sick. They were just empathetic and saying they hope she feels better. They came over to me to talk to me and she followed again complaining about how sick she has been and kind of pushing them to ask why she has been feeling so sick. When I finally said, Sarah, are you effing kidding me? No one gives a crap that you are pregnant. They don't even know you. Sarah ran off crying and my mother-in-law heard me say that and told my father-in-law who screamed at my husband saying how we hurt Sarah's feelings and how she's just excited. My husband doesn't think I did anything wrong and my high school friends think I was fine too because they know the backstory. My mom and some of my husband's family think I was the butthole. So am I the butthole for telling my sister-in-law that no one cares that she is pregnant. And now to the update. Update to my previous post on my profile. My husband and I finally had our honeymoon and we were unreachable during our holiday because we were out of the country. Our whole family knew this before we left and we told them the only way to reach us in emergency was to call the hotel. We knew Sarah was going in for her appointment while we were away, and we told her we would call her as soon as we got back home. My husband and I was out one day for the whole day from the hotel doing activities, and when we got back we found a note on our room to say we have to go to reception. Once we got to reception the person told us we had 7 missed calls from family and gave us a number to call. We didn't know who called or what about, but we thought it was an emergency. We called the number and it was Matt. He was very confused and asked why we were calling him on our honeymoon and asked if we were okay. We said that the hotel said TS number called 7 times and asked him if everything was okay. Matt said everything was fine but Sarah wanted to talk to us. Matt called Sarah over and she asked us how we were having fun etc but we just wanted to know what was going on because we were so worried. Sarah said she went to the doctor and got some news. We asked her if everything was okay because she kept not saying anything and we could hear her and Matt whisper to each other. We heard Matt say to her, did you seriously call the hotel seven times to tell them this? It could have waited. Sarah finally gets back on the phone and said that the doctor said she was going to have twins. We said congratulations and asked if there was anything else. We thought it was an emergency. She said no, she just wanted to share the news because she's so excited and scared and she couldn't hold it in. She said she also called my mom and told her they are friends on social media. My husband and I both just said we were very happy for them but really didn't want to be bothered again if it was not an emergency. Sarah said we were being very rude and she just wanted to share the good news. We hung up because we had to get ready for dinner. When we got back into the US, my in-laws picked us up from the airport and were asking us if we spoke to Sarah. We said yes. She said she was having twins and we were very excited for them. My father-in-law then said, Sarah told them we were extremely rude to her and Matt and we were dismissive and hung up the phone. We told them what really happened and they said that is not what Sarah has told the whole family. We are now back in our house and haven't spoken to Sarah or Matt but Matt texted us both, but the text only came through later where he said he was so sorry that they bothered us on our vacation and he felt horrible. We just texted back and said all good and that we were very excited for both of them. All I can say about this whole situation is that I am very happy that we live on the other side of the country from Sarah. Additional information from OPA. I spoke to my mother-in-law today and like everyone said Sarah didn't calculate her time right. She is actually about 8-9 weeks pregnant according to my mother-in-law. Sarah is also having twins that were 2 eggs and 2 sperms, not sure the medical name, and each has their own sac. It seems Sarah's eagerness to share her pregnancy news overshadowed consideration for others and caused unnecessary distress during the wedding festivities. The repeated interruptions and insistence on drawing attention to herself were perceived as attention-seeking behavior, 
potentially taking away from the joy of the newlywed. To the next post. I know that my husband is cheating on me with my best friend, but if I left, he will take half. Posted by Deleted. I'm a 40-year-old mother of a baby girl who is 5. I have been married to my husband for 12 years. About 10 years ago, I started my business, and it is my pride and joy. I love my life and I enjoy my work. Two years ago, I lost my beautiful mother to breast cancer. It all happened in five weeks and she was so young. 55 years old. It sent me into shock and depression. A short while before that, my best friend found out that her husband cheated and he left her for his mistress. It was a hard time and my best friend and I became even closer than ever before. She moved in with me for a while after my mother passed because I wasn't really functioning and she was homeless. I started with antidepressants that offed my actual needs. I felt guilty for my husband but I really couldn't do anything but try to be healthy again as soon as possible. My best friend lived with us for one year and they started sleeping together towards the end of that year. That's when I got home early and heard them. I ran out in shock. I came back a few hours later pretending nothing happened. I managed to smoothly find her a place because I couldn't bear it happening in my home. My sanctuary. My happy place where I live with my daughter. My best friend had already found herself a job, and I took the opportunity to find her the apartment near her job. She was grateful. I was a bit more relieved. The affair is still going on. If I leave, he will take half. It will ruin me and my business and what I am trying to build for me and my baby. No, I don't want to leave. It is so unfair that he is the one cheating and I am the one who will pay if I said anything. I refuse so I am letting it happen. Instead I wrote him off as my companion and safety blanket. I still have lots to be grateful for. My baby. My family and my beautiful home. And my business. Most of the time, I am content and happy, even though I myself don't know how I am doing it. Maybe it is numbness, or resignation, or maybe it is true contentment. But sometimes when everything is a hundred times magnified I can barely contain my panic. Especially at night when he wakes me up because I am crying. Again. Are you having a nightmare? And he tries to kiss and cuddle me to make me feel safe. I am here. I am here. You are safe. I wish I could tell him that my nightmares are my escape from my reality with him, and that his shoulders aren't safe. He rarely asks why I'm crying, he probably thinks it is mom, because that's what I tell him, but sometimes I feel like he knows, or that he can't help himself wondering. What's going on behind those eyes? What do you mean? I can't read your face anymore. See you are silent again. When I look at him, he immediately looks away like he is scared he would turn into stone, and says I miss you, that's all. My panic has increased more these past few months since he started paying me attention again. The first period after mom's passing, he never bothered me out of courtesy I suppose. Never asked for intimacy. Then he had her so he didn't need me. But now? I don't know what changed. They're still together so what does he want from me? Is he testing me? I never understood why they're doing what they're doing either. I have seen their texts. There's no love there, no respect, no warmth. Not what I would expect from two people who are sleeping together, especially not when the stakes are so high. You would think that they love each other so much that they're willing to pay the price in case they're caught. No, there's a lot of anger, fighting and resentment. A lot of guilt and self-hatred. He calls himself and her disgusting and shells of a human being. Is that too some sort of love? I don't know why I'm writing here. I googled about infidelity and self-help and I ended up in this community and I read tens of similar stories. Maybe I would feel better writing my own down. Please don't think too ill of me. I know that I am pathetic, but I used to have more dignity. Additional information from OP on speaking with a lawyer regarding her assets. I have already talked to a lawyer. I contacted one one half an hour after I heard them in my bed. I have discussed many options during the months and none gives me full control of my life and company. One was a postnuptial agreement of course, but why would he just sign one? We discussed maybe I confessed to him that I know about them hoping that he would want to do anything to save the marriage including a postnup. But this is leaving too much to chance, and to someone who could easily cheat on me, but also it doesn't feel right to lure him into signing, then go ahead with divorce anyway. I can't be this malicious. My other option is one of my family members buy in, my dad or brother for example like 10%. It would leave me with majority in case of divorce and I could buy him out eventually. But again, I leave much to chance and no control over the outcome. Mostly I am not looking forward to seeing my husband real face, which I believe I will, when I ask for divorce. If he did this to me when he pretended to love me, then how would he act when he doesn't need to pretend anymore? Do I want my baby to see her parents at their worst this early? Not sure. 
Maybe I am just obsessing as usual. And now to the update. Hi everyone. I have made a post previous to this a few weeks ago. Thank you for the support and the many suggestions. If you want the details please read that one first. I promise that I will make this one very short and simple. I have taken two measures to protect myself and my daughter when my husband and I get a divorce to protect my assets and my daughter's future. I am sure many will find my methods to be dubious and honestly, it is fine with me. All's fair in love and war, and this is a bit of both. I told my father everything. He was horrified but a bit relieved that he finally found out what's been hurting me. We have discussed the possibility that he could buy into my business in case I need to divide so he and I have the bigger share and still can make the decisions. Then I have agreed to my husband's suggestion of seeing a marriage counselor. He talked about my mom's passing and how it affected me and my mentality. He kept talking about me building walls and being distant and how he was longing for me to come back to him. I just wondered while he talked what he would do if I told him that I knew. Would he still complain about my walls or finally understand them? I opened up about my mom's illness and how it affected me. Not only the losing her part but the fact that my grandmother and great-grandmother passed the same way. It kept me thinking that I have inherited this and passed it down to my daughter and the guilt and fear that I have been feeling. I chose to have my daughter fully aware of the risks. What was I thinking? Since the counseling we have been talking more in our day to day and I just honestly told him that my business was one of the stressors in my life. That I'm always worried that if I didn't fix our marital issues and he wanted to leave me it would change my career and future, while his wouldn't because he is government employee. This was two weeks ago. The day after, he sat me down and told me that he wanted a postnuptial agreement to make me feel more secure. He wanted me to be with him because I wanted to not because I had to. I talked in my first post about my house etc, but I really don't care about that anymore. Everything else can be marital property and honestly I started to hate this house and I can't wait to leave it. So next move is starting the separation. I'm aiming for the end of this year and then only the hardest part is left. Telling my daughter that mommy and daddy won't be living together anymore. I am not looking forward for that part. So what do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments below. It's unfortunate that the husband's infidelity has put the wife and her business at risk, while he seems to be prioritizing his own desires over their marriage and family. Please consider subscribing. It is free and we post new Reddit stories every day. Check out our playlist with all our videos. You can find it in the description box below. Have a miavelous day and see you in the next one.